Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of Warp, the completely unnecessary Star Trek podcast where we do unasked for audio commentaries of Star Trek episodes. My name is Sean. My name is Matt. I'm Jake. Aaron. Minwin. And I'm A. Yay. Yay. <laughs> yeah, the crew is back again. It's been a little time. I hope everyone's been healthy and safe. And uh, yeah, so uh, today we are watching... Season 2, Episode 9 of Star Trek The Next Generation, The Measure of a Man. Yeah, baby. Uh, probably the, some say the greatest episode of Star Trek Next Generation. I don't know about that. Certainly the first great, the first, the first great the episode. the first great episode, absolutely. That's got some words. Mm-hmm. And it would definitely be in... Like top on five. any like top ten list, it would yeah. absolutely yeah. It was, be on. It was that. very touching. I was, it's I was a really getting, good episode. I was getting cheery at the end of this one. It's yeah, the first and legitimately it's one of the best with Guinan, I would say, according to Wikipedia. <laughs> <laughs> Did you read an article? Every episode with Guinan in it is a good it's episode. Great. She is so good, you guys. So let's get the party started. I got forty-five minutes and forty-three seconds on the clock, and I'm punching the triangle in three. Two, one, punch. Yeah. Aaron, you were Ooh. saying like you recently fell in love with Data or yeah, just okay. show this is what I want to This is what I got I like clued in on Data. Uh-huh. Okay. So you were we were in Palm Springs last weekend mm-hmm. and when you sent that when you sent that text about nice. love. Oh wait, here we go. Iconic. Yeah. Uh, first poker game. I love it. Really? Life. Yes, this is the first poker game in Star Trek in next Oh, are there going to be more? This becomes an I- iconic intro to the game, to the series. It's, it's, it's a regular, it's a regular thing they like. The to crew do. playing poker in in Riker's room. Mm-hmm. They've got to have a velvet painting of that moment uh, somewhere. Someone's got that. Oh. Uh... It would go. That would go in the box, right, man? Not no, really, yeah. <laughs> that would be awesome, right? To have a velvet painting of that. Put that, that on that. two tables. <laughs> yeah. I will source that for you. Yeah, I'm gonna get you, you a, two like trap. A table on a table, and then put that on that second table. <laughs> put it on the you triangular go on, table. If you go on Etsy, I'm sure you can find. I'm sure, you could find a velvet a, painting uh, of the Next Generation crew yes. playing poker. You could probably also find a velvet painting of dogs in Star Trek uniforms playing poker. Oh, my God. The pain. <laughs> That's twice as much, though. So. And then on the other side, cats playing poker. Yeah. That's ridiculous. <laughs> cats don't play poker. They play gin. <laughs> <laughs> cats are more of a Texas holder. I'm for gin. <laughs> I like the Data's, um, like, little little dealers oh, yes, uh, you always visor, dealer yeah. visor. is is futuristic like it's yes, not just like a normal green mm-hmm. one or whatever it's like they made it spacey so that you know they're they in space they always make things sparkly so that you know that they're happening in space but you have noticed though that <laughs> after trying the circle cut cards the future they decided to go back to the they went back yeah, to the regular car. <laughs> they're like why the fuck did we change to circles that made no yeah, sense when did they play with circle cards back on the, on the old, old series show. that whenever the people were playing with playing cards they were cutting to circles ridiculous in my mind it was Riker. <laughs> he was like get those circle cards out of my face we're playing yeah. with classic, classic yeah Riker's a traditionalist mm-hmm. Riker's also like a an excellent poker player. Like this yep. is a recurring thing that he's an amazing poker player. Is Although Dana he just no gave away his last card when he didn't need to. Yeah, he was making a point. Uh, he was making a point to Dana that he's that he could bluff, that he was a good liar. <laughs> he was rubbing his face in it. Is Data no good at poker because he's a, uh, an android and he just has well, he just no, hasn't learned it yet. He hasn't learned to lie. Nuance he's, is new to him. The nuance of poker he hasn't figured out. Hey, it's regular one. Yes. <laughs> is that the name of the space station? It looks like the sta- space it, station. It it's is, the same it model. Is same model. <laughs> I like the tension he has with this lady too. He's like, yeah, I think they had a they had some kind of thing yes, in their past, right? That is they, the that is the th- well, she, she was the JAG lawyer who prosecuted his court martial after mm-hmm. the. Uh, the the you know where he got in the fight with the Ferengis yeah, the and all of the Gazer? all the the Stargazer ex, uh, incident. <laughs> you know, you know. Sure, you'll recall, Aaron. Yes. Yeah. In the episode 
But they weren't. They, they didn't date. They just were like. I think that while well, they had a, they, there's some sexual tension. Yeah, there, it got it got intimate with them. It well, it's just does seem like they had some kind of something going on. So that actress is Amanda McBroom. The most interesting thing about her, she wrote the rose. What? Uh -huh. What's the rose? The, Was that a bet that song. Oh. She wrote the song. She wrote that song. Some say love. That's the. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's, that is a weird factoid. <laughs> no, this actress. Good ass song. Wrote the rose. Do the credits, on the Todd. Uh, we're season two, episode nine, "The Measure of a Man." Original air date February eleventh, nineteen eighty nine. This was their Valentine's Day episode. Yeah. When Data resigns his commission, rather than be dismantled for examination by an inadequately skilled scientist, a formal hearing is convened to determine whether Data is considered property without rights or is a sentient being. Now, we know we've talked about how great this episode is. What do you think the IMDb rating of this episode is, Aaron? Oh, God. I'm going to say an 8.8. .8. Seven seven. Ooh. Go on, Eight four. There. Eight five. Seven nine. Nine point oh. two. Oh my god. Uh, good for you, Star Trek. Good for you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the highest rated episode uh, I believe we've watched so far of Next Generation. Oh yeah. Oh, for, for sure. sure. It's so, been clearly the IMDB off. raiders agree with us that this is the first great episode. Yeah. 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 Yeah, they definitely it's have something going. End, man. Yeah, they look like they they look like they are still kind of into each other. <laughs> yeah, she's good. I liked her. Yep, they had a good uh, rapport of like, oh, there's chemistry here. We're recognizing it, but are we going to play into it? Yes. Yes. I mean, <laughs> in this scene, she kind of like. Calls, she calls him a pompous ass and like a sexy, like very sexy, at this, like in the same two lines. <laughs> so, and he's just kind of like doesn't know how to deal with it. <laughs> yeah. I, and I like too how he's like, he's like, oh, I'm torn about this. Like he's not like, you know, quirky where it would be like, oh, I'm going to raise my eyebrows a little no matter what you say. That he's yeah. actually <laughs> processing <laughs> her feelings about him. I yeah, like the glassware. Um, it's a good Picard episode, too. Also, he is kind of a dick to her right here, though, because <laughs> he's like, he's like, you were a bad prosecutor and you cared more about winning than you cared about getting to the truth. And like, he's pretty mean to her. I mean, I, he has a reason to, but mm -hmm. still. Oh. And then she calls him an asshole. Go. And yeah. a sexy man. And a sexy man. man. Hell yeah. Yeah. Which well, embarrasses yeah. the hell out of him. <laughs> so here we go. There he is. Does this name ring a bell to you, man? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I mean, the face does. Bruce Maddox. Does that name ring a bell uh, to you? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. In the uh, the Picard, uh, the right. doctor or the... So the... that gentleman in the blue science uniform uh, is Bruce Maddox. Uh, yeah. He's I the guy it. coming for data. I wasn't expecting it either. It surprised me. I was like, I recognize that name. <laughs> mm -hmm. We had talked about it on the show. Matt had said that when we talked about Picard, that that's where Bruce Maddox came from. Yeah. The links are, are, are being connected right now. For some reason, that actor, uh, Bruce Maddox actor, looks it's, familiar. His Has name he... is Brian Brophy. Uh-huh. Uh, Look at him giving Data the fucking side eye. He's in a <laughs> yeah, lot of right. things. Of like, he's like, I can't wait to get my mitts on he's you. Like, I cannot wait to start <laughs> taking pieces off of you. Yeah. You look like a robot. You look better on a metal slab. <laughs> <laughs> getting all Ted Bundy over there. Oh, my uh, science laboratory. Uh, uh, Data's uh, spidey senses are tingling. Naked and broken into parts. <laughs> Well, I think he looks like a poor man's Adam Levine from my room. Uh, <laughs> sure. Sure. Uh, uh, uh. sure. Sure, sure. A really poor man. <laughs> Not he's, he's done a lot of, like, small parts in actually pretty big movies. but a Adam Levine? I recognize his name. No, this guy, uh, Brian Brophy, the yeah. actor. And Adam Levine. Hell yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> anyway, course. when you sent that, Aaron, when you sent that text the other day about falling in love with Data, I was talking to Sean about it. I was like, I can't believe it took three years, but we're finally turning her into a Star Trek fan. Like, <laughs> by the end of this, well, she'll be she was... dressing up as she'll be dressing <laughs> up as Dr. Pulaski and going to conventions. <laughs> Dr. Pulaski of all. I will, man. I well, like her in charge attitude. <laughs> <laughs> she takes care of things. Um, uh, Aaron enjoys uh, Spock. She was totally into the Vulcans, right? Yeah. Yeah. So Data, maybe that it's shows just... a lot campier, though. Like overall, sure. There are things I really like about it, but this one is very different. Yeah. It feels more like she... to the story more of the, these. Sure. Yeah. And this will, and more and more like this series will get more into longer character arc yeah type things but, that you don't have you don't have it all in original series yeah and picard is good in this one like i've had a hard time i know i like him as a human being as an actor and he certainly i love his like you know <laughs> oh, he is so style. good like, this episode but this i think is also a turning point for picard i think really? for both Where's, of them it's a yeah. character deepening of data and of picard I've been waiting for Picard to see more like a human, too. It's like they both sort of are more human in this episode. It's a classic Star Trek episode. It's got an ethical dilemma. It's got a lot of yeah. the, it's got a lot yeah. of uh, speechifying. Picard gets to do a classic oh, that, his a classic speech. speech. Is so he is so good in it, too. It's just it's just very good all the way around. And Riker's guy, Riker's, Riker's argument is great. And, yeah, Riker's Riker's got his own like subplot ethical dilemma because he doesn't want to have to do what he's been ordered yeah. to do. But he's got to do oh. it, or it screws Data anyways. Uh, to be in. Uh, he calls Data it rather yes. than mm-hmm. him, which is what Pulaski does. Pulaski still do that, or does she only do it in that at the beginning of the season? I Pulaski don't used to remember do if she ever refers. Yes, but I think she's starting to call him him now. Uh-huh. I refer to him as. She's finally starting to acknowledge his basic. Uh, yeah. Exist. Mm. Hence character development and progression. Yay. <laughs> yeah, she's still a horrible person. <laughs> I think she's necessary. <laughs> Because well, don't fall, is, don't fall like, too much in love. Yeah, she's gonna not going to be around much longer. Drag that along, you know. She asks the questions, or she acts a certain way that gets you to think about it. Like that's a whole thing. Can't wait for Beverly to come back. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, that's a big. I mean, that's what the whole point of this episode is, right? Like, what is he? Like, she helps kind of stir the pot with that, right? Well, yeah. it's a big question across the board. Yeah. And... Data a little. Mm-hmm. But she comes at, you know, because she's a scientist or, you know, a doctor. There's a certain authority on which she inquires. But but even, uh, even scientists and doctors can have faith, you know? Like, wasn't that uh, a little... Uh, uh, I, I'm reminded of, like, the movie contact for some reason there's like a a balance or a yeah balance between science and and um belief or something no yeah that is kind of what that movie's about Mm -hmm. maybe it's uh the same way with uh data you just gotta like he he's a a bunch of parts but at the end he i don't know he 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 has a soul Mm. about whether he has a soul yeah but then yeah. the question, you know, does anybody have a soul? Does it really matter? And how do you prove it? And yeah. I, it's a it's classic interesting. Star Trek. It's a it classic F- Star Trek it's ethical. Exactly of what's the ma- what makes a man? What what right. gives somebody life or what, whatever? What is what makes humanity humanity? You know, they do I uh, just out of random didn't didn't think it through, but I watched uh, AI uh uh-huh. this week i hadn't mm. seen i've never seen it spielberg's ai yeah 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 mm. it's, a, it's such a, a great movie it is a great movie i'd never seen it before i thought it but had been it's so interesting to me yeah yes yes is tom okay. in that one? no 
that's Minority Report. Isn't Jude Law's in it? Jude Law is in it, playing the hooker nice. robot. Remember when he was in everything? <laughs> this is the kind of part that Jude Law is great at. Uh, yeah. But he's not like the main character. He's just sort of like a goofy yeah. side. I thought uh, AI was panned by uh, critics or the audiences, or um, it, it's a really good movie. It, I really liked it. It's too it's long. A, I'll say it's that. An, about it. It's an excellent movie. <laughs> what I what I was but what struck me was typically when you have and even like this, it's always about like will a robot ever you know if it if it has emotions or how does a robot feel about humans and android feel about humans and whether or not that what makes them a person is whether or not they can re interact with you right how they're going to react to your and it's interesting because ai it's all about you can teach you can program an android to love but can you ever convince a human to love it back sure i mean humans fall in love with all sorts of inanimate objects don't they well, that's, I mean, that's the we that's don't the, don't we? <laughs> I mean, don't they? <laughs> Scotty and the Enterprise. I, I like it when you refer to humans as <laughs> them. something you've been observing for a while, <laughs> not something you're overly familiar with. Oh, here we go. He's packing up. Scott, one of these days, you're gonna beam back to your home planet, yeah. and we're all just gonna be like, "Yep, Min went home. Observations yeah. complete." <laughs> Yeah. AI, AI has oh, a Oh, look it's AI, Russia. Has, AI has a profound message about, you know, the nature of our humanity. Mm. Um that's kind of really delicately stated. But the the running length is 2 hours and 26 minutes. So All right, so I'm out. Apparently I would like, but I like that movie so much. Yeah, yeah I think it it was really good. I think the end gets a little I, I'm not sure like the end I, it's interesting cuz there's Sort of an end point, and then it goes on for another twenty minutes. Okay. Yeah, I'll but put that, it for the that, director. You have, have to, yeah, but those twenty about, minutes are pretty are important. Time. You have to have that twenty minutes at the end. Right. Like mm. without that twenty minutes at the end, the whole story doesn't really work. That's I, that's interesting. I've I've got to go watch uh, AI now because uh, I had never really considered it a movie to it's free on Prime. Mm, okay. <clears throat> what is Data doing right now? Is he is he He's putting... packing up and leaving? The only options he's been given is either do it or resign your commission. Mm. Yeah, the doctor wants to run tests on data and try and figure out how data works mm. because they've never been able to replicate him. You know, sure. D Dr. Soong, who built data, died and no one else has been able to replicate uh mm -hmm. Any, anything even close to data. So what this guy wants to do is take data apart, basically, and uh, analyze his bits and see if he can figure out how to make more of them. Yeah, so you could have a data on every Not ship. His but... bits. <laughs> yes, his bits and his bites. <clears throat> another another unexpected feeling I got after watching this episode, and mm. sorry to re refer to the future here, but I was I was much more okay with uh, Gerardi letting this guy die in Picard. In Picard, after yeah. knowing what he tried to do to Tata. <laughs> yeah, it was like you know what, fuck this guy. <laughs> do, uh, uh, Jacob, had you not seen <laughs> this episode before? You you don't remember having? Watched I don't. Rem I just don't remember it. Yeah. Mm. Gotcha. Sure. <clears throat> it's lost I mean, in a cloud of other excellent <laughs> sure. card speechification. <laughs> well, uh, he does come off as as being very scientific, very you know to the purpose. It doesn't matter if if um, you know, like Data is maybe a sentient being. He's gonna perform his experiments. <clears throat> well, Data's telling him, "I'm I'm quitting Starfleet." I'm resigning from Starfleet rather than follow the orders uh, to, to go with you. Yeah. That's why he's packing up. Mm. And so the argument becomes whether Data even has the right to, to resign. Or, does he, is he property of Federal? Or, is he, or is does he, he belong to Starfleet I, does, because he's just he, a robot? Bruce Maddox refers to him as a toaster at one point in time in this episode, doesn't he? <laughs> That's am I not? Am ridiculous. I not wrong? It's Jacob, do you remember Aaron? It's either him, it, might, it might be... Um, the 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 lawyer or the judge? Well, it might be um, it might be Riker. 
Might or be does Riker. Riker call him yeah. that? Oh, is that at some point in time I remember him being referred? I thought I remembered him being referred to as a toaster. Yeah, he does. He does. Hmm. That happens. <laughs> That's some bullshit right there. Yeah. Oh, look at the look at that little rock, like the kind it's you get. Cool, like the geo yeah. geo type it's thing he's got like, there. Yeah, mineral fair. <laughs> yeah, like you get at the Fresno. The big- <laughs> <laughs> I, was just saying, I bought one of those at the date festival one year. Yeah. I like its presentation, though. Like, it's- why does every fair have a like rocks and gems exhibit? <laughs> I love that shit. I do too. It's just funny that like they every always do. fair has one. <laughs> they always do. They, they do. always have that. The small you towns walk, always you got rocks. The room. You can walk through the room with the black light on, where you can see oh, them yeah. all glowing. Oh, um, yes. After the kind, the kind and quantity of food that you've just eaten, you feel like you should enrich yourself in some other way. It's like, yeah. a, it's like a shame kind of a thing. Like, like I can like feel good I about go, eating a deep fried Twinkie learn if I go to look about rocks later. Yeah, it's like I need to learn something because I've done horrible damage to myself. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many specimens out there. If I spend five minutes looking at third grade art, I can earn <laughs> that. Giant stack of French fries all yes, fried together. Brick fries. Oh yeah, what is it? A brick. <laughs> There's a name for it, John. A brick fries. <laughs> I think my days of eating that kind of stuff is over. <laughs> oh, really? Wow. Funnel cake. What about yeah. funnel cake? Deep. Deep fried. I don't think I need to do deep fried anything anymore. It's okay. I'm okay with that. The only thing I still like to eat at the fair, out of all of that stuff, is I still like to have a corn dog. Corn dog. Because yeah. it's kind of the only place you can get a corn dog. So other than malls. You, they yeah. Have corn dogs in the freezer section of your supermarket. Yeah, oh, it's that's not, not the, the same. same. What? It's all... oh, well, no, it's corn not dog. the same. God corn damn it. It's been a while since I've had a corn dog. Fresh fried batter on there. Those fresh fried, exactly. It's just not the same. Oh. That it's right out of the fryer. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I mean, There's I didn't know that there were such strong opinions. Schnitzel. Have you heard about that? The that? corn dogs at Wiener Schnitzel. Well, I've never. I don't gone really well. like the corn dogs at Wiener. Really. There's yeah, some I think they let them sit out. out. I think I they let them sit out stuff. too long. Yeah. And they get kind of gross and not crisp and yummy, mm-hmm. you know? To know? I don't like them. They have some stuff going on with nacho cheese called Ooze Fest that I'm, yes. I'm sort of sort of checking out on. I on. love the Wiener Schnitzel. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm thinking about it. The last, the last time I was... I was uh, here. Hot dog a on a stick is better than Wiener Schnitzel. If we're I agree. Corn dog. But... Are those even available oh, right now? Because they're all no, because no, yeah. they're all in mall food malls. Court. Damn it! Yeah. yeah, can't get an order. I don't go to Wiener Schnitzel for the corn dogs. I go for the chili and the chili dogs and the chili hamburgers. And... Mm. Uh, Jordy's get all getting all for clumped. Getting all clumped over data. It's his best friend. Yeah. His best friend. Yeah. Okay. Buddy saying goodbye. Yeah, it's sad. They should be playing Boys to Men right now. <laughs> <laughs> Boys to Men. Boop. Into the road, or it's so hard no, to say goodbye. I, to I was thinking today. Motown Philly. <laughs> uh, <laughs> something upbeat. <laughs> yeah, you want to leave them with a BBD. positive spin. <clears throat> Can't uh, can't the hot dog and a stick uh, people move to like food carts? Hot dog on a stick in a truck? Uh-oh. I don't know. You have to carry around a could. deep fryer. I don't know. Uh, sure. No. You would yeah. think there's got to be corn dog like food trucks, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure there are. You would think that would be the perfect. All, this has gone on far longer than I thought it would when I made my innocuous comment <laughs> that I enjoy dog. eating a corn dog at the I'm, fair. I'm seeking out. I didn't intend, I didn't intend, really intend to get into a 20 minute conversation about where you can or cannot <laughs> get a corn dog. You know, it's um, I'd like to expand this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you need a you need a corn dog. Oh, yeah, I, I know a guy. I know a guy. I can get you a corn dog. So the only the only the only caveat is it's like, did you know they have them in the freezer section? Yes, man, I did know that. <laughs> yeah, Not I'm a same. fucking citizen of the world. You know, I know what they uh-huh. keep in the freezer department. <laughs> yeah. 
a first <laughs> in a first world nation no less <clears throat> yeah i think food truck food i'm also maybe what yeah. are you sketchy food about that food is good no i'm not sketchy about it at all it's just oh. a lot of it is kind of like fair food yeah, even uh, if yeah. it's more gourmet i just think my gut needs tend to stop <laughs> <laughs> With fried food, for the most part. Oh, there. Oh, there. Called. She just said it. She, yeah. she just it. said it's potato toast. toast. <laughs> now, Picard, somebody pissed. Forgot. So now Riker's agreeing. Yeah, okay, like, you're fine. On. You're on, bitch. I don't wow, know, guys. That's, what... that's how she won Riker over? Yeah. No, well, she forced she's... his hand. She's she forced said his if hand. You don't, she told him, if you don't agree to be the lawyer for the data is a robot side of the argument, Mm-hmm. I'm just going to automatically rule that he is a toaster and you'll lose. Because uh-huh. Riker was like, I don't want to f- argue this side. I, I don't agree with this side. Yeah. And she was like, senior officer, you have to do it. Mm-hmm. So it's going to be Picard versus Riker. Picard v. Riker with uh, Data's uh, existence. Dawn of Justice. On- wow. Yeah, Picard v. Riker, Dawn of Justice. That's right. Wow. Zack Snyder's Picard v. Riker. <laughs> right. Ooh, a Zack <laughs> Snyder Star Trek movie. Oh, that sounds no. so awful. Yeah. <laughs> Does that Come sound on. awful? You imagine yeah. anything worse? That sounds so bad. Oh my god! <laughs> I mean, superhero movies. A Star Superman used to be bright and wholesome before Zack Snyder got his hand on it. And Star Trek is the same way: bright and wholesome. Right. Wholesome. It started yeah. with Nolan and the Dark Knight. Oh. But Batman's supposed to be dark. <laughs> Superman yeah, isn't. But then the He's called the Dark Knight. Thing. Yeah, I mean, yes, I agree that dark the Dark Knight trilogy spawned. Uh, you know, all of that shit, but it's not Nolan's fault for doing something right. I'm not blaming him, I'm just saying that was the beginning, sure. <laughs> but then, you know, you don't have to. I mean, Zack Snyder just thinks everything should be dark. I mean, have you yeah. ever seen that stupid what's that? What's the, the movie the with all the the women in the sucker insane punch. Asylum, sucker punch? Yep. <laughs> My no, God. did not watch Vanessa it. Hudgens. Uh, maybe I'm making a mistake. The fact that his name is Zach. That doesn't seem. <laughs> well, there's a Zach Efron. We all love Zach Efron. Sure. Zach's... He's Zach without us an eight. You know, he's oh, Zach cool. without an eight. You're okay. Then yeah. it's open. Yeah. I'm Zach's... actually enjoying that show he's doing on Netflix where he travels. It might oh, have... yeah. I've seen a little bit of that. Um, it's good. He goes around, he's got this like compadre that's like this healthy living guy, and it's not as annoying LA as you think it would be. They go and they kind of take a deep dive wherever they go. The first episode was like in Iceland, and they did this exploration of clean energy or cleaner energy. Yeah, like, they, they bury something they, and they cook it. In the- yeah, they use the, oh. um, the volcanic activity. What's that called? When they use the thermo geothermal yeah like what they do out by the salt and sea and that kind of stuff so you came for the abs you you stayed for the learning <laughs> it's good it, yeah. and it's kind of fun just to see something where they go places you know because we're kind of stuck right now so like he does that that's the first episode i saw the second one is about water and apparently paris does a really good job with their drinking water and they even have like uh sort of like perrier coming at, out of some of the water fountains that's wow funny. I want to check that out because I'm addicted to Perrier. So I'm <laughs> to up there. You're like free Perrier. Sign mm-hmm. me up. Mm-hmm. I I didn't know that he had uh, he had a show like that. Yeah, it's actually really educational mm-hmm. and interesting. It's not annoying celebrity style sure. stuff. Yeah. Nice. Cool. Yeah. Did it's, you see him on uh, Bear Grylls? On Something when, about uh, Earth. <laughs> I'm not good with titles, but mm-hmm. it's it's worth a look at. Did any of you guys see Zac Efron on uh, Bear Grylls when he was like, uh, uh, you know, Bear Grylls will have like celebrities on and the, he'll take them through like some sort of wilderness uh, sort of like challenge. Um, and and uh, yeah, he had Zac Efron on. And I think Zac Efron turned out to be really cool and, and, and interesting, you know. So, well, he uh, did live through three, through three high school musicals. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He seems like he's doing okay, considering, you know, started. Sure. Seems like he's trying to find purpose in life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Zac Efron is pretty low on my list of people that I'm going to feel sorry about. about. Yeah, Yeah, no. I think he's doing just dandy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Unlike poor Data. 
is having a rough time of it. This <laughs> yeah, let's focus on <laughs> his, his his life is on the line. Mm-hmm. Life is on you the line. You gotta hand it to Riker. He's doing his job. He's yeah, doing he his does. job uh, uh, really well. Yeah, like, he freaks out the guard. He's Riker's like, got fuck. a really good argument here that he's yep. making. He's like, you guys, uh, I don't want a corn dog real bad. I know. <laughs> I know. Okay. Yes, you're right. I do too. Sorry, I brought okay. it up. I really do have displays. Well, apparently you can get them in the freezer section. So. <laughs> oh, I didn't know that. Oh. <laughs> I've never Trader been Joe's. to a store Thank before. God Sean told me. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of Riker, who saw the season finale of Lower Decks? <laughs> it was great Riker Troy cameo there. Oh, yeah. Oh, awesome. yeah. Sorry, like spoiler that. alert if you haven't seen it yet. It was yeah. pretty awesome. My whole life's a spoiler alert because I don't get to things on time, so it's all right. <laughs> I don't sweat it. <laughs> it was pretty great. And uh, the the season premiere of Discovery was a couple of days ago, yesterday, I guess, two days ago. That's That was pretty good, too. The new oh, season man. of Discovery. I want to catch up good. on this. Show now. Uh, I got to watch all the other seasons first. Didn't oh, they? God. I read that they renewed it. I know you do. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> So I mean, Sean's got a from... busy life. No, I, Sean only can watch something if he starts from the very beginning. Oh. Watch this. Watch this, Data. What, Min? Whatever your name is. <laughs> Look at that. I'm this. an android. You found me out. How can you no, bend no, that? You're, an, really... you're from outer space, man. Look at the feet, you're not an guys. How can you bend that super off. heavy metal rod if it's so easy to take his arm off? I mean, wouldn't it just pop off accidentally? doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. It's, it's like, science. It's like Chewbacca. Yeah. Chewbacca doesn't make sense. <laughs> Riker knew well, what button. Riker knew what yeah, to do to make the arm come off because he looked up the specs uh, yeah. last night. He got to read the instructions. Well, I do like the inside of the arm though. It's pretty. It's pretty futury. Yeah, it looks yes. real futury. Yeah. <laughs> That's how you know it's the future. Oh, <laughs> oh snap! No. Just because not you can be turned cool, off Riker. doesn't mean you're not a life form. Oh, Pinocchio is broken. Yeah, he calls him Pinocchio. That's rough. Yeah. Which is a callback to the very first episode With- when Picard, when Riker first meets Data in the holodeck, and uh, uh, he calls him he calls him Pinocchio in that Ooh. first episode. Huh. Oh. Got it. Callback. Riker hated himself for that right there. Yeah, he's real ups- He's oh, unhappy. He, yeah. He beats himself up pretty bad. Mm. Oh, yeah, as, yeah, as, yeah, as, yeah. but right, here we go. This is it, you guys. This is there the, she is. The scene. Got that knowledge. We'll go every time. There's our girl. We got to right. pay attention to what's going on here. Because yeah, they have so a really deep conversation about... Picard's worried because Riker did such a good job. Picard now thinks he can't win. He might not be able to win. What are they drinking? Is that coffee or it looks like well soda? Picard always drinks tea. Tea. So I'm guessing mm. it's tea. It's kind of too bad that that hat design never really took off. <laughs> I wish I would love to see more people wearing Whoopi Goldberg Guinan hats. You gotta have a very like good profile for that hat though. Sure. Like, I don't know that it works as well without the dreadlocks coming out the back. I think it could. It reminds me of uh, in Game of Thrones. Who's the uh, old matron? Uh, she had like big head things like that or similar. I don't know. Oh, yeah. The mom of Natalie mm-hmm. Dormer or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. One of the houses. Mm. Are, are <laughs> One of the houses, you know, in the show. Yeah, I know who you're talking about. Mm. But the, she had like the badass death where she was like, I'm just going to sit here and drink this th- thing and, like, stare at you. Guinan's uh, talking about uh, uh, she's black the, people right now. Yep. Yeah, she's nice, talking about... A nice slave analogy She's they talking use. about slavery without actually using the word slavery. Mm-hmm. It's pretty fucking genius. It's a pretty great scene. Yep. Yeah. And then he says, Slave- you're talking about slavery. That's good. Yeah. But she's like, the, only, the, the data has value because he's the only one. You start... So- Making thousands of them, they do become disposable at that point in time. So is she specifically calling Picard out for slavery in human culture or that slavery existed in her own culture? She's saying it exists all over the galaxy. I think it's slavery is a pretty, I mean, that happens in all cultures, yeah. 
she's giving him the 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 hints he needs to make the argument that he needs to make yeah. in order to win the case. She thought that he needed a little bit of uh, advice about so, what yeah. approach she should it's take. Like Yoda, she's really old, so she knows a lot of things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She could have swept in here and just like defended data herself, but <laughs> she's gotta help him achieve, you know, victory. Mm-hmm. Eh, she likes she operates more from the sidelines. She's not <laughs> yeah, really I mean, uh, I get though. She's just like this amazing She's a good bartender. Yeah. She's the world's best bar. She's the galaxy's best right bartender. Right now. <laughs> she could have given yeah, we a We could all use a Guinan right now. Right. Definitely. Guinan for president. Friend in 2020. Or at least as a bartender friend. <laughs> I kind of was a guy in a past life. Mm-hmm. Different career. <laughs> this is when you were bartender and uh, rebel. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Students. My oh, previous career as a thousand year old bartender on his face. <laughs> yep. I can imagine it. <clears throat> Oh, they're going through. Uh, yeah, he's this... like, why are you taking this stuff? Yeah, if he's you're just like, a robot. This should mm-hmm. should mean nothing yeah. to you. Why are you taking around? Uh, why are you? Why do you collect them? I, like, I like when they get to the top. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, if it was men, men would be saying, "Oh, that actually belongs uh, on in the box." It's, I didn't. Yes. Yeah. I didn't need to bring that along with me. Yeah. Well, who brought that macaroni? And then men would be disassembled by now. <laughs> I am so offended. First off, that you guys think you know me so well. Oh my god! I mean, it's not like we've been talking uh-huh. to each other for years now. I mean, it's not like it's been twenty-five years of friendship or anything like that. But yeah, sure, sure. You're a complete mystery to me, man. As all, <laughs> I'm a mystery to myself. Oftentimes, <laughs> you know. Like, why did I do that? that he said they were intimate. Uh, I mean, yeah, they had this is Data class. admitting that they that he they bones Tasha. Mm-hmm. Yeah, bone Tasha. Good times. <laughs> yeah, and uh, Picard is disgusted by that. I have no further questions. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he's disgusted. <laughs> oh, God, Data. He's like, ew. <laughs> Picard's like, I didn't know that was your relationship. <laughs> I thought like what I was expecting. <laughs> I, I didn't know you were going to say that. <laughs> Data's like, remember that time we got infected by space virus and we all we all got super horny? Oh, and we never yeah. talked about it again. We never talked oh, about yeah. it ever again. Oh, yeah, right. Oh, Maddox. So, Darren, no, no, you know, no, they have from um, the space from hand to... There it is. They have um, Archie Jughead uh, slash... Porn on the internet from Riverdale, like the, the oh yeah, oh yeah. from not the car, not the comic strips. The actual... well, they have comic strip stuff too, but I think this is more specific. The actors from the... Riverdale. It's Riverdale. more specifically about the characters from Riverdale. Oh, yeah. Do you know what their name is? What they, what they, the like cutesy Brangelina name that they use to for that couple in the Archie fan in the Chuck. Riverdale fandom? Oh no! Archie. Oh man, Archie. Uh, mm, it's Archie. not Arch. It's not Archie. Juggy. It's Jarchi. Jarchi. Oh, Jarchi. Oh. <laughs> I think I like that. I thought you guys. I thought that. I was like it. Jarchi. I like it. Jarchi. Like, I was thinking Jarchi, I'm and I thought, it. no, that's too. They'd no. never do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not ready for Jarchi. They would never be that cool to go Jarchi. <laughs> they did. So is there some Betty and Veronica action going on? Yeah. I'm sure there is, but that doesn't speak to my interest, so I didn't look into it. <laughs> All right, I'll let you know. Where's Philippe? Betty. <laughs> we need someone to look up I'll the list. Him on it. I'll have him do some light Googling. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to stay light for long. Jeez. Right. Yeah. I mean, uh, that that uh, just makes me think of the the movie Bound that the Wachowskis had done way back in their early career with, uh, yeah. who's that, Jennifer Tilly? And, yeah, uh, Gina Gershon. Oh, uh, hmm. Yeah. With Joey Pants. <laughs> Joe Pantaleano? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, Joey Pants. 
Yeah, I don't even remember anyone other than the two females. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay, well, man, we get it. That <laughs> says a lot there. Uh, sure. Do you get it, Matt? Okay. We get it. You like girls. I like it's to fine. see two women having sex. <laughs> No, There's nothing know. more intoxicating than the clear <laughs> absence of a penis. <laughs> I prefer my men like Ken dolls. That's one of my favorite Brooklyn Nine-Nine lines from Andre Brower when he's trying to play it straight. <laughs> so good. Oh. Yeah, it, it's a lot of a one scene, one room. That it's, a classic Star Trek, it's a classic Star Trek courtroom episode, yeah. you know, but it's all so good that it's just, there's right. not much to say about it except, boy, this is a really good yeah. episode. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Boy, this is a really good episode. Now, de- now Picard's giving his, it, like, yeah, so. Picard's giving his big, like, Star Trek speech about the value yeah. of different life forms and, uh, it's great. I like to think that after this episode, some kid went into like his high school theater class and there, he was like, for today, my monologue comes from the ep- Measure of Man, the Star Trek episode. I'll be playing Jean-Luc Picard, Kevin yeah. Picard, and he just launches into this stuff and everyone's just like, what? Yeah. I thought you were going to say that you thought it would inspire somebody to go into like robotics or something like that. <laughs> You went in a different direction from the direction I thought you. Yeah. I like how the court. They try to pull everyone's arm off to see if it'll Mm. just, if they're an android, just like tug on it a little bit. Mm -hmm. Min, do you find the very like, uh, very rigid countenance of the judge lady to be alluring in any way? Is that your sort of thing? Not, not. Not really. I think it's the hair. I can't do the hair. It's it's too poofy for me, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but maybe if she like repermed or or supercut it or something. Depermed. Depermed. Oh, depermed. Yeah. Mid- yeah. Giving you a hot tip: don't go to the Midwest. For this. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. Yeah. Is that a common hairstyle? Yeah, I can see that. Short and permed mm-hmm. is common. In women of a certain age. Did you ever do that, Aaron? Mm-mm. No. Men doesn't like women of a certain age. Oh, wow. What? what? Someday he'll be of a certain age. <laughs> <laughs> he is. Yeah, he is. A, he is right now yeah, of a certain, certain age. ages. Very much so. I like how the the court I is in the round. Hair. I always had wavy hair, so I didn't. Mm. I didn't need to like. Make it curly. I feel like that was people with straight hair did that to give it body. Sean, do you ever prefer? Would you prefer having straight hair over curly hair? Mm, no. Really? I like. When curly I was hair. younger, I would have, but now I know. Oh. No. Oh. Interesting. Straight hair has a lot of limitations. <laughs> Wait, what can you do with curly hair that you can't do with straight? Well, it just has body, like uh, it's easy. Bounce, I don't know. Bounce. Yeah, sure. Honestly, like you know, you can always straight. Everyone it. can make their hair, hard straight, but it's just like how much effort do you want to make? Like when hair has natural body, you don't have to try so hard. Yeah, curls hide a lot of uh, flaws too. <laughs> <laughs> really. But I used to live in a much more humid climate, so my hair was a lot bigger. I have to say, the West is best for hair. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Are you saying, Sean, if we like, if we cut your hair, we would find like uh, uh, crags or ridges that we it's wouldn't? It's not. It is not. No, I when I was in my twenties, like everybody, I shaved my head, mm. and it did not look good. Oh. Yeah, we've talked about this before. I do not have a nicely shaped head. It's got a lot of ridges and bumps and shit. <laughs> Phrenologists would be into you. Yeah. That, that could be, but I definitely don't have the Picard skull that a bald man should have. <laughs> Some people want the war flow. Like, I bet that guy's got a lot of ridges and bumps in his skull. That's why he's got really? hair. Really? That's funny. I would have expected him to be smooth. I'm a little scared what Maddox would have done with Data when he was offline. <laughs> yeah. 
He's kind of got Barry like, called don't him. be in a room alone with Maddox kind of vibe. Mm-hmm. And... He finally called him a him, though. Yeah. Good stuff. There aren't many oh, women named Philippa still... nowadays. Ooh, he wants dinner. that dinner. Oh. Yeah. I love how they say, I didn't think there was money in the future. Oh, how could he? Uh, they always go back and forth. It's like a gambling thing. Why would he have to buy anything? Is yeah, it all out of the I think that's just like an expression yeah. in the future. I don't <laughs> think it means anything. Uh, Riker is not going to the party because he feels bad. Feels guilty. Data's going to give him emotional rescue here. And he's yep. like, dude, if you hadn't done your job as well, I wouldn't be here. Yeah. Yeah. It's super sweet. Yeah. It's very touching. There... Speaking of Riker, oh. uh, he also directs stuff, and yes. I saw him do a thing, uh, a watch along of a Agents of Shield thing that he directed. Oh wow! Dude is funny, <laughs> and he was talking about directing. I was like, oh my gosh, this guy is awesome! Oh yeah, he also breaks. What and he was mean? on a panel for Lower Decks too, which I also watched. Uh... This is what happens when you actually watch Star Trek. You watch things. <laughs> wow, you're deep in the Star Trek world right now, May. I'm, I am getting into it. I mean, Lower Decks has made me watch other Star Trek things. I'm reading articles. I'm watching panels. <laughs> you, oh. should, you should watch Discovery. I think you would really like it, actually, May. I, I watched the pilot. Yeah. But then yeah, I, I have to tell you, though, this is the, this is the downfall of Sean's start everything His from the very beginning. first season isn't very good. That first season is kind yeah. of a rough season to get yeah. to. I still want to watch it. Yeah. But it's only like second, 10 episodes, Yeah, it's right? only like 10 or 13. Yeah, so uh, it's not like I'm going to watch 25 episodes of shit. Sure, sure, sure. A dozen second episodes of crap I could is deal much, with. The second season is much better. Yeah. Uh, and this third season, I mean, they it's only been the first episode, but it its it was probably the best episode they've done so far. Is so, well, that's like Parks and Recs for me, like the first season is rough, but it's only six episodes. So. And right. So many. It's the story of every television, almost every television there's show. There's so few. Ep- there's okay. very few. I mean, you have like ser- the rare series like Lost and and Glee, where the first season is the best yeah. season. I know. But, yeah. yeah. But, but it's, it's rare that that's the case. Usually, it's probably ten percent, maybe. Yeah. Usually, shows that go six, seven seasons, it takes a couple seasons before they start yeah. to get really good. I might actually try to jump in and watch Picard first because I didn't actually watch that whole show. I watched like the finale. <laughs> I was like, I don't know what's going on. Um, also, Picard, I just did, also I just did a show. That's with a hard one to jump in just so. for the finale. Sorry, May. What did you just say? Uh, oh, I didn't. If you watch a, a show with other people called Filipino AF. On at the Hawaii Comedy Festival, uh, it, they do a show with Issa Briones. She was in it, so she talks about being on Picard. She played the twins, right? Yeah. Oh, right, 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 right. So, oh yeah, I might watch that. First. It's a little hard. I don't. It'll be curious to see what you think about that. It's a little hard. I would think. It, I think it will be hard to follow if you are not already pretty familiar with the story next of Star generation because so much of it is based on well some of it is based on this episode we just watched. right mathematics dude um and a lot of it is based on sort of like the back history uh of the characters so i'm not saying don't do it i'm just saying i'll be curious to hear what you what you think about it till next time <laughs> one of these days mm-hmm. well the episode ended yeah. I think we all learned a lot about what it is to be a man. Yeah. About six hands. Having a penis. Applying heavy makeup. I thought it was removable hands. <laughs> yeah. We know he's got a penis because he had sex with Tasha. He was in a That's well, all. Well, get creative. There, yeah. That should have been there the only argument trends, Picard yeah. had to make. Did you ever have sex? No. Yes. You, you How don't did need you have sex. D. Because I have a penis. D. You know, man, <laughs> end of episode. You have to remember that this is a show for children mostly. <laughs> mm. 
What well, ever. like a lot of literature, you can apply your own uh, spin to things. I'll say families. <laughs> yeah. Uh, right. Yeah. Well, okay. Me. <laughs> Anybody have anything they'd like to? Do you have a corrections corner you want to do, Matt? Uh, uh no. All right. <laughs> Recommendations, anybody? Correct. All right. So uh, <laughs> go ahead and tag it, Matt. Um, recommendations? Yeah. No, I don't have any recommendations. Tag it and bag it. Thank you very much for listening to Warped. Please remember to rate, review, and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. You can follow us on Instagram at Warped Podcast. You can follow us on Twitter at Warped Track. I am on Twitter at Host Warped. Min is on Twitter to learn about our Dungeons and Dragons and Call of Cthulhu live streams and uh, live plays and whatever, Twitch streams, <laughs> all whatever. Of all of that stuff. All the D&D &D and Cthulhu stuff is at Wet Maynard. You can find merch on Instagram at Lunar underscore Flare. And you can go to Patreon.com slash Warped, become a Patreon, and get access to additional content and bonus episodes. The election will be over by the time this airs, so Ooh, I'm not going to say I'm not going to say all my political stuff that I've been saying because it's all it's all we've made a choice at this point mm. to yeah. live or die. The choice to live <laughs> or die has been made. Do we, do we all want to try to you know predict? I don't. Wanna, I don't. <laughs> no, no, no. I don't want to predict. <laughs> I predicted on so election much. day, on election day, I was walking back. Scan and I walked down to the polling place down the street, at the church down the street. And then on the way back, I was saying, you know, I know it's, it seems like it's close, but I feel really confident that Hillary's going to win. Like as we were walking back from the polling place, I'm saying, you know what? I'm feeling really good right now. Feeling really confident. So I think I jinxed us. <laughs> I kind it of blame that comment. So we all jinxed us. It all, that, that, it's all your fault. Yeah. So Matt, this time I'm not saying anything. Not saying a damn thing. Everyone keep your fucking mouth shut. Yeah. All right. That's, well, I'm going to hold too much my breath on your shoulders, the though, next so. 14 days. And thanks for listening. <laughs> for listening. Sean? Uh, thank you all for listening. My name is Sean. My name is Matt. I'm Jake. Aaron. Minwin. I'm May. Good night, everybody. Get out of here. Yeah. Hopefully the country hasn't burned out.